Hello and good evening. My name is Andrea Picard, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you, welcome you this evening to the Toronto International Film Festival and to the North American premiere of Transit by Christian Petzold. To begin, we would like to yeah, there was a woo there. That's great. To begin, we'd like to acknowledge that tonight's event is taking place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of New Credit, the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Ashnabe, and the Huron Wendat. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community. This film is eligible. This film is eligible for the Grolsch People's Choice Award. Please remember to vote at tiff.net slash vote. And we would like to extend a very big thank you to Films We Like, Music Box, and The Match Factory for providing us with this film this evening. And we would like to also extend a great thanks to German Films for being the wonderful partners that they are. And um, as I mentioned, this is the North American premiere of the film. I saw it earlier this year when it premiered at the Berlin Film Festival in competition. And I'm really, really happy um, that the film is part of the master's program. I think that Christian Petzold is definitely a master. And he has a very long and august filmography, but I think that he was um, not as well known as he should be to North American audiences until his last film, Phoenix, which we premiered here at TIFF. So you probably all... Yeah. Big Petzold fans tonight. This is really great. Um, I do, you know, sometimes I'm prone to hyper hyperbole and exaggeration, but I, this is not the case. I do think he's one of the most intelligent filmmakers today. He's a thinker filmmaker, and in no means does that sort of take away from the aesthetic pleasures of his films, but they're real puzzle pieces. So I have been thinking about this film since that time because there are so many ways to read it also. And uh, many of his films are about historical trauma, identity, a mirroring memory, and this film also plays into that. It's an adaptation of a book by Anna Segers, written from 1942, and I think you'll understand why he wanted to adapt it, because there's these amazing contemporary resonances, but he does it in such an ingenious and sly and, again, intelligent way. And unfortunately, um, Christian could not be with us tonight because he's already working. Uh, he's always working. Uh, he sends his regards. Uh, but we have a very special guest with us this evening, and we're very thrilled to have the lead actress, Paula Beer. Please welcome her this evening. Thank you so much. Um, I was asked to do a little introduction, and I never did that, so... Um, I, I, I heard a little bit of what you were saying, and I know Christian would be happy to see such a full room in, at such a late time. So I'm really happy you all showed up, and um, I hope you're going to enjoy the movie. It's what Christian said is it's a bit a ghost story from 1940 set in our present day. So I'm really curious to see how you like it, and I'm here afterwards for a Q&A, so then we can discuss about the movie. Thank you. Enjoy the film. Thank you. Thanks for sticking out so late. We cut the credits, but um, we'd love to have a conversation. So I was just asking Paula um, if she had uh, any insight into why Christian Petzold decided to adapt this film this novel from 1942 and to set it in a contemporary setting, even though it sort of feels half period, half present day, and if you could start with that. Sure. Um, I'm not sure if you, if you had the chance to read that novel by Anna Zegers. Um, is now in Q&A. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, um, and as you said, it's it's set in the in the forties, and Anna Zegers she was in in Marseille herself because she wanted to to go um, over the sea, so she was waiting for a transit. And I think it's one of Christian's favorite books, at least that's what he told me. And I think he was so so moved by the book and so touched by it that he didn't want to just put it into a movie, but transform it by by the way it the book touched him so and he's really a fan of ghost stories and non well characters that are not free from their trouble from their th thoughts from their feelings of um um i don't know the word in english but um yeah who who have 
to deal with all the troubles over and over and over again. So that that's why he put it in our day uh, and our time. And I think it's a really clever move because it shows you so much and you can interpret so much if you want, but you don't have to. And that's how I feel about this whole transmission. I actually have a, an interesting anecdote about that. The last time Christian was here, when he showed Phoenix, he actually did something really lovely because he had been working with Harun Faroqi for a long time, who was his mentor and script advisor. And Harun had passed away shortly before he arrived. And he came right from the airport with his luggage and he wanted to introduce a tribute screening. And someone asked him, what are you working on? And he said, Harun Faroqi introduced me to this amazing novel. Mm -hmm. And they were working on it together. And what is it called? Transit. And that's why I went and I bought it. And then four years later, here we have this amazing film. Yeah. Yeah, and he told me a story that he, after Harun passed away, he couldn't continue working on, 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 the, on the script because it moved him too much. And then he laid it back and... At one point he was like, okay, I have to change it completely to be, uh, to, to be able to work on it again. And that's one of the reasons that he put it in, in our times as well, to, to kind of take the soul of Harun, but transform it and move forward in a way. And obviously a lot of people are reading this as exceedingly political and dealing with migration in Europe today. And he deals with it in, in such a subtle, intelligent way. And I don't know if he spoke to you and Franz about that. And obviously, in, in shooting in Marseille is also very loaded as a continued port city today. Yeah. Well, um, the funny thing is always when you're shooting that when you start to prepare the movie, it's about one year and a half before the movie comes out. So the political situation was not completely different, but slightly so I think the meaning um, changed that it got even more important when, when it came out. So um, we didn't talk too much about, about the political issue because Christian is, he loves to talk, but still he loves movies and he loves to share movies and watch movies together that he feels are linked to his project. Um, but also he, he loves to not speak too much about maybe things that are um, quite clear or quite in the room. Um, yeah. So what did he have you watch? Did he recommend anything? Um, well, you know, I just been to a panel and I forgot the English title of the of the movie that he asked us or me actually to to see because he thought that for for him that movie is so important for my character. And in German, it's called Fahrsturz und Schafott, but I have no. Frantic. Frantic. Um, but we've seen a lot of movies. And you know what was really nice when we were shooting in Marseille, they created like an open air cinema club for us. So um, every night on the terrace, they had their beamer on site, uh, outside, and we were watching movies together in the, in the crew. So we had a great summer in Marseille watching a lot of Christian favorite movies. That sounds pretty fabulous. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and cute. I don't know if you had ever the chance to, to see Christian on interview of him. He really likes to share his, his knowledge about, about movies and about stories. So he, yeah, he, he, he really loves taking people on a trip by what he likes and what he feels is great art and uh, is worth it to share. So I think I learned a lot from him by, by spending this summer in Marseille. And I think he's got great taste too. Yes, yes he does. <laughs> Are there questions for Paola? Yes, over here? Mm -hmm. Well, did everybody hear the question? <laughs> so that the film has some echoes of a previous film of Christian Petzold, it's called Barbara, but that this film seems more pessimistic. Yeah, well, it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but maybe that's as well a German way of telling stories. Um, as you know, we're very good at drama and at heavy drama. So 
Um, but what I feel is that this movie is, in a way, a bit lighter and a bit... Even though maybe for you it's still drama, but for us German it's, it's already lighter. And <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the hope is that you, in the end, you, you... I don't know how you felt, but for me it was like you, you don't know... Um, if it's Mary, if it's a new woman, or what happened, and um, yeah, kind of that the when you know that the novel is based in the forties, and now you see them as safe in in the present day, that the the ghosts are still going on and on and on, and maybe even if Mary Ma Ma Marie died, she's still there and hoping for to be. Revealed? Do you say that in English? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're still looking for to be free in the end, and until they can't, the ghosts are still there. And if you see it in that way, there might be a little bit of hope. <laughs> More questions? I think also there's the idea of melodrama too, as well. Yeah, Germans yeah. are good at that. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Are there any more questions? Yes, right here. I just want to comment a little bit on the hopelessness or not hopelessness. I think there's a lot of very subtle humor in this film that does not translate uh, when you hear it just meet the subtleness. Ah. Um, there are many incidents where you are laughing because it's, it's partially kind of transmitted knowledge that you just have. It, the, the story about the essays in school, for example, Okay, so uh, sorry, we're still going on. Um, so um, the comment is that there's a lot of subtle humor that is very culturally specific, so it doesn't translate to the subtitles because it is very subtle, and that she regrets that that's the case, which is also very uh, symptomatic of cinema too, and we see that in many national cinemas, and it varies based on language, but also that the final song, because it's so uplifting, it's like such a slap in the face, because we know the situation is pretty messed up. You know how I feel, it, but that's my, my personal, point of view and how I feel towards the movie is that because it's not a period movie and it's not saying okay this is a situation we had like 70 years ago and this is how you should behave or that is what we should have learned from the past but it does that in showing okay it's uh, like like it would be the other way around maybe um, like people fleeing from Europe and not coming to Europe and reminding us that we are always dealing with the, the same problems in society, may, wherever in the world, and that these points can change, and that the directions change, and that fear and, and aggressions and violence always was a reaction on that, and, and always was compared with these movements, and um, that in the end, and I know that Christian was really fighting for that song in the end and that he really wanted that song to be there. And I, I feel like we can't just be depressed about how horrible situations in the world are, but we still have to continue and we have to, to, to stay with our hope, even though when you look at the facts, it's really hard to, to, to stay with your hope. But to be like, okay, but that's life and we have to fight for it and we should enjoy it even though it's really hard sometimes. Are there more questions? 
I think also for me, what's so smart in the film is that there are these tonal shifts, and he's really good at doing that too. Yeah. You know? There was one a, more question. Yeah, a question over here? Thank you. I am, you know, these two are the most different you could compare. Um, Maybe some don't know who it is, if you could present the other film. Oh, yeah. Uh, my other movie is Never Look Away by Florian Henkel von Donnersmark, who did The Life of Others. Um, and, yeah, the, I mean, the whole, the whole work with them is so different. Christian Patzel is someone who, who loves to come together in the morning and the actors will go to the costume to be already in the physical state of the characters. But then you would rehearse for three hours and that could mean that you just sit together, drink coffee and talk about the scene or that you really rehearse it and try different versions or talk about a movie you saw last night with your cinema club. Um, and then the actors go to makeup while the, the rest of the team is preparing the set. And then you would really concentrate at work for maybe three or four hours, which is really unusual by shooting a movie. Um, and then you would be finished at 5 p.m. and then you can enjoy the rest of the evening. Um, so we ha really had a great time in Marseille. Whereas Florian, is maybe more, maybe more looking for the perfect, perfect moment. And Christian is a huge fan of the first take because he says the unreadiness is his perfection. Whereas Florian is doing takes over takes to find the, the, the moment which is sparkling. And so he's trying and trying different versions and again and over again. Um, but what they both have in common is that they, they are f so rich of, of knowledge, of knowing movies, about knowing about art, and they love to share that and inspire you in a way of not only telling you you have to do that and you have to think of that and um, have your goal in mind when you're playing that scene, but they create like an artist atmosphere where as an actor you can just jump in and dive and get all the all the inspirations they give you you can just take and be like okay just let's try whatever comes out in the end are there more questions well some of you might have also had seen Paula in France the Froissant Ozon film which we showed here and that's also another period piece and so you've done period pieces and contemporary, and maybe if you could talk about the different mindsets that you have to get into in the differences between the two. I think maybe the only thing you have to have in mind when you're doing a period movie that you can't talk like you do today, because um, I think language changes within the years and gets easier, or we have words we like to use. Um, um, but f apart from that, I think it's it's not a big deal in in the way of preparation. And but for shooting, it is different because when you have the chance to get in a real, well, sometimes you have the luck to to come to, I don't know, a house which really is from that time and never changed since that time. Um, and that does change when you're in a period costume, period shoes. Then your hairs are different, and then you enter this historic building and suddenly you, you feel different. Um, sometimes your clothes are so tight and you feel like, okay, <laughs> this is uh, obviously a period. So, yeah, but apart from that, I think there is no real difference because people always had emotional troubles and that's my job. <laughs> a question over here? Exactly, yeah. It never look away what her role was. Yeah, it was Carl Zeban's daughter. Oh, yeah. up, up there. I can't even see that. <laughs> <laughs> There's no lighting, so. <laughs> no, hey, I love the movie. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Yeah.
Mm -hmm. It took my breath away, and I want to know, like, when you were reading the script, what was your reaction? Uh, well, exactly the same. I was, I was like, what is that girl into? And in the beginning, when I actually when I got the script, there there wasn't written Marie is coming in or tapping on his shoulder. It was always a woman. So I was like okay, is that already my character or not? And um, so I talked about that with Christian and I was like, yeah, but, but, but what's, what is she actually looking for? And what, she's so not, you can't grab her. She's always like away before you already realize, oh, it's the same woman. Um, and for me, be, because it's such a cruel scene when she's so close to him, I, I hope you meant that scene uh, in the end when and they're so close, and she, she's about to kiss him, and then as a spectator, you're like, what the fuck is going on? Um, you, you hope that finally she's in love with him, or he's with her, and now what's happening? And I felt that Marie is really, she feels really sorry and has a huge feeling of, um, of guilt for something that she did a long time ago and she's so much looking to get her life back she had because she's so lost, she lost everything and uh, she lost her home, she lost her love, she lost um, everything she knew she had to, to, to go away from her country and now she finds herself back in an environment that she's so much not used to and she's only going for that that she knows and that is her husband and so for her, it's a really tricky situation. And I think when you split up, you everything you sacri sacrifice everything that was to protect yourself. And you're always like, no, he he wasn't that bad. Um, so I think she is really that kind of woman um, who wants the past to be better than it was to get healing. And that's why she's so much looking for, his hu for her husband, and that is why she's so, yeah, not understandable, like what, what she's doing, and, but uh, although I, I truly believe that, that she does feel love for Georg, but it's not possible for her to, to deal with it. Yeah, and I hope that gives a little uh, answer to your question, but maybe it shows like how I'm answering is, I think that's a bit of Marie <laughs> talking out of me. <laughs> Um, and how sh how confused she is. But that brings up an interesting point too. Does Christian have conversations about character psychology? Well, he once said to me that he's not the biggest fan of of uh, inter interpretation interpreting too much in um, <laughs> sorry in the um, Your English is fantastic by the okay, way. Thank you. Um, and yeah, and, and seeing too much in it, um, but he loves the actors to do their job, and then he can say, "Okay, I, I, I love that. Let's do that, or let's change it." Um, yeah, but he is, I think, more into building up the story and bringing the actors to the point of doing it than mm. talking too much about the psyche thing. We have time for one more question. If there is. I think we are all a bit tired, maybe. <laughs> no, but I want to ask what it was like to work with Franz, too. Oh, he's great. Um, he's really the sweetest colleague you could possibly find. He, um, yeah, he, he, he's just great. He's, he's so much into doing it together and finding a solution together and um, not only doing what what you're told to be to to do but really to find a solution together and that's maybe or at least that, that's how i felt that christian france and i um the scenes always turn out to be really our scenes because everyone had the same amount of um sharing his opinion um and he always france was a dancer and if you see him on set he he really is dancing in the, in, on the set. He's really like finding his movements 
on set, like, where, how do we, okay, where do we grab each other? Okay, no, and then I go here. And a bit of choreography. Uh, yeah, it's great. And it's such a great influence to have someone who's so, so vivid and not only, okay, mm -hmm. I'm doing my text here and then I go here, but he's like really in the, in the air. Mm. Well, it sounded like a beautiful shoot and it yes. resulted in a beautiful movie. Thank you so much Thank for being so here. Much. Thank you. Thank you all.